All right, today we're gonna to practice some watercolor practice techniques. I've loaded up my paper with nine boxes, six of the ones that you see right here, which include, I'll call them more of the traditional watercolor techniques. And down here on the bottom, I have some more of the little bit more untraditional, which are kind of cool techniques that I'd like to show to you guys today. For those, if you have them, you'll need salt, You'll need an additional paper towel, which you always should have when you're doing watercolor, and then plastic wrap. So I'm gonna start first by doing the more traditional um, watercolor practice techniques. Um, I have always have my water container right here. I have a brush, um, which is a number 10. You could use a number six or whatever you have. I have a round brush. We'll talk about two different brushes that you probably have, which include a flat tip brush. So you can see it's nice and flat like this. And then a little bit more traditional is the round brush, but the flat brush is great too for some things. And I'll show you in just a second. I have my pan watercolors. You could have tubes if you like. And um, with these, you know, you're going to need water to activate. So I have my water close by. The more times you brush and you swirl around in your watercolor, the more pigment you're going to pick up in your pan and you'll transfer onto um, your painting that you're going to do. Um, with a wash technique, which is the first one, this is the most basic and I know it seems very simple, but it's good to practice the amount of water that you have down when you apply it in an area. We want our goal to be for it to be nice and flat onto our page. So I'm gonna show you how I do that. When I put mine down, I can see it's already starting to pool just a little bit with like a lot of water. If yours does that, you can wipe it off on your paper towel, come in and grab some more pigment with not as much water on your brush. Now when I put this on, again, I'm just trying to practice good craftsmanship, so I'm trying to stay within my borders right here. I also sometimes like to, on this exercise, I'll go ahead and show you, I kind of like lift my, um, paper up I'm trying to get so I'm not in your way so you can still see and then you can see it kind of pulls right there at the bottom so the any of that extra water I can just kind of dab that with my brush go onto my paper towel and kind of get some of that loose water up and it kind of spreads it a little bit more evenly so it's nice and flat on my sheet of paper you're going to see sometimes there's buckling that happens on your paper, so your paper starts to warp a little bit, um, and that's because there's going to be extra puddles. So lifting that up just a little bit without, but if you have too much water, then you'll just want to try to kind of soak that up before you lift because it will run down. But it's a good to kind of practice that. So a nice even coat was what I was after. On this one, I'm going to clean off my brush. So I'm just going to clean it out. Notice how I just kind of wipe. I don't want a lot of excess water on my brush. I can always come in and just kind of clean it off just a little bit. I'm going to make a graduated wash. So I'll use the same green color that I've already activated. So I've already got some water in here. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to come back in, grab some of that paint onto my brush, and then I'm going to do a couple of swipes right at the very top. So I've got a nice, um, rich green color. So I've got a lot of pigment. Now I've went about a third of the way. I'm going to now clean my brush. So I've kind of cleaned off the excess water, come in and kind of wipe down with paper towel. And then what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna wipe that. So I've kind of worked my way into the paint just a little bit. You can see how it's lightened up a little bit right there. We'll do that same thing again. Clean off my brush. This time I'm gonna wipe it down so I'm not gonna have a lot of the excess water. And then I'm gonna just blend that right there. So you can see how I've graduated that tone. Right in here, I can see there's a little bit of line so I'm just gonna kinda of touch that just a little bit. 
So that goal being I want a nice transition going from green to the white of the page. That's a graduated wash. So watercolor is really good for blending. But notice how I didn't get tons of water on there, so it pulled when I did it. Now I'm going to do a multi-wash. So I'm going to do two colors right here. So I'm going to clean off my brush. It's nice and clean. And maybe I'll do this one. Maybe I'll do this one going from yellow. So I'll start. I've got a clean brush right now. Let me activate that yellow. You could do it any color. You could stay with that green if you wanted to or the color that you already had. So I'm going to do the same process. I'm putting in that that one layer of yellow down here. Clean off my brush. Swipe again. And again, we're going to the water, clean it off, wipe it off. Now this time, I'm gonna pull in another color down here. So let's say I'm gonna take my orange. And I repeat the process at the bottom, kinda like when we worked with some other mediums. Oops, let me get some more orange on the brush. It should be a little bit richer. Clean off my brush. Down. So I get I wiped it down so I got some of that water out of the brush before I blend it. So I don't want tons of water here. So a nice soft blend going from um, a yellow to orange makes a multi-wash. I've got two colors in here. Now the glaze technique. Now glaze is very interesting because watercolor is transparent. So let me come in here and I'm going to add yellow down. This is going to prove our transparency. So on this one, I have to let this dry. So watercolor is an interesting medium because we work with it in a lot of wet and dry ways, especially to create layers. So I've layered in my yellow right here, and I'll clean off my brush, and I'm gonna let that one dry while we move on to the other ones. So wet and wet is extremely fun. For this one, all of these we had dry paper. On this one, we need to go ahead, and I've got my just cleaned off my brush, so it should be clean, and I am going to wet only inside this this um, box right here. Now it's not totally soaked, really thick, but it's nice and damp right in here. What's interesting is, is the effect you get. So let me grab some blue. And I'm just going to blot this in. And you can see how it just starts to spread and move around. This is a really cool effect that starts to happen and sometimes it's really spontaneous and we don't know how and what it's going to do. Now our paper here is a multi-purpose paper. It is not a traditional watercolor paper. So watercolor paper, it would sit up on top a little bit more and you might see a little bit more of effect, but you are gonna see some. So this is awesome for clouds and things like that. Um, but it's, it's a really cool effect because we can't plan it. It just starts to kind of happen. But what is great to know about this, this is, I can let it go. It's not gonna flow out here because water goes where water is. If it's dry right here, it's gonna to try to stay in this general pocket right here and not move over to the outside. So it's really good to know what it does because you gotta work with watercolor so that you keep it nice and dry sometimes so that you can work around it or not let it flow to other areas where you don't want it to be. Now dry brush, I'm gonna to change to one of my smaller brushes right here. I got to have my brush nice and dry. 
And the hard thing about this one is, is that watercolor, especially pan watercolors like this, you need a, a decent amount of water in here to get this pigment to work. But if I don't load up my brush with a lot of water, you can see that even with watercolor, I can make textures with my brush. And my lines can be nice and crisp. They don't have to be wet and watery like this, but I need a very dry brush with a very limited amount of water in the area with that already activated pan of color. Now salt is a lot of fun. So I'm gonna move on while I'm waiting on this glaze so I can show you some of these more experimental ones right here. So on this one, I am using regular table salt. I have a little bit left in the classroom. And I'm just gonna get a little, oops, that's a lot. I just need a little bit, so a little bit in my hand. I will tell you, it works better if you use like, I use Himalayan pink sea salt at my house. I know that's funny, but um, I found that it does better with the techniques than regular table salt, so you can experiment with that. On this one, you're gonna need it, it's gonna need to be nice and wet. So I'll go over here, I've already used that orange one time. I'll go ahead and grab that orange right here. And it works best if you do this pretty quick. So I've just put down a nice layer of paint and I'm just doing a little sprinkle. Okay, so let me zoom in on this so you can see what is happening. So what's actually happening here is, is the paint is being picked up by those salt crystals and it's repelling the water around it. So it leaves like these little textured dots right here. And um, you'll see more of that occur as it starts to dry. So I'm gonna let that just kind of leave it there and let it do its thing so you can see what happens in just a little bit. Okay, I'm just kind of experiment with what if, what if I put water, but I'm just gonna let, let that kind of soak in. Okay, I'm gonna leave that right there. Okay, now blot. I ended up using this a lot um, this um, this year. Let me get grab some more of that blue that's already activated. And I'm just going to start by putting just like a little wash down of this blue in this area. Might need to get a little bit more pigment in there so you guys can kind of see this texture it creates because this is a texture. So pretty smooth, just a wash right here, but taking my crumpled up paper towel right here, watercolor, sometimes it goes so smooth, you can't get to see textures, but if I took this paper towel and I blot it down like this, I can create a real crinkly texture, so blotting does create a texture. Now this last one, Come in, I'll add some more of that green. We're gonna use plastic wrap, so hopefully you have some of that already from your supplies that we've already done. And I love plastic wrap because it creates um, a really geometric pattern. So I've put this on and then I'm just gonna kind of drop this down, crinkle it and drop this and let it soak in that page and you're just gonna kind of just leave it there and you have to let it dry. So what happens is, is it's getting, the paint's getting pulled into these suck pockets right here of the plastic wrap and it creates these geometric patterns when it dries. So I'm gonna let that go just for a little bit. I can make here blot. Okay, now let's go back to glaze for a second. So glaze right over here, we put a layer of yellow down. 
I'm going to come back and I'm going to put some blue right on top. So again, this is dry, but what this shows us is we can see underneath the color. So we can still see that yellow. So watercolor is transparent. You see what's actually underneath it and it changes the color. You can see it looks a little bit more greeny over here. I think I picked up a little bit of that yellow when I was coming along. And then this side is gonna be a little bit more of your blue over here. But what this tells us is whatever is underneath, especially if the watercolor is really, really not dark. It's more like lighter, more opaque. You are going to see what is underneath it. So be kind of careful with watercolor. Um, you can use this to your advantage by creating layers and building up. Or if you do something and you don't love it, got to figure out a creative solution around it. All right, so I'm going to wait just a little bit and then I'll come back and I'll show you what this looks like when it dries.